For multiple years, I've been growing velvet bean because of its medicinal uses. But over the last couple of years, I've read a lot more, particularly in this book, Restoring the Soil, about what an excellent nitrogen fixer it is. It has a huge amount of leaf mass that it creates, and it makes a ton of nitrogen beneath the ground. So today I wanted to introduce you to it a little bit more and plant some in the food forest. Though velvet bean isn't really an immediately edible plant, you can eat a little bit of it when it's green for medicinal purposes as a, it's got dopamine precursors in it. It's supposed to have some promise in treating Parkinson's symptoms. And it also is a testosterone booster. Though you can't really eat much of it, you can't eat it when it's dry because it's somewhat toxic. It has its own really good uses. It has been used as a cover crop in between crops of corn in the tropics. You've always seen those uh, slash and burn agriculture stories, right? Where they take a piece of the rainforest and they cut it down because the farmers need land and they need to grow food. They cut it down, they burn it, they get a year or two of soil fertility there and then the fertility is done and the ground is wrecked and the forest is gone and the soil just can't support that kind of agriculture. The corn crop takes it out of it and then the farmers are forced to move on to new properties. They need to slash and burn again and again and again. Well they've discovered that if they grow crops of velvet beans in between the corn it produces so much beautiful biomass and so much nitrogen that it actually allows the corn to continuously be cropped year after year after year. And in the book I was reading, he talked about for their systems that are 80 years old, where the ground is spongy and soft and full of life and fertile in an area that's not known for having fertile soil. And it's been continuously cropped with corn, which would otherwise really take out uh, a lot of the fertility and you know necessitate continually chopping and dropping the rainforests and burning them and so this allows you to improve an area of ground so it's a kind of an awesome cover crop and of course we don't have great soil here we have a, a sandy loam that tends to be very acid and to be able to have more nitrogen growing we grew this last year it did very well and to get that extra biomass is really a big plus and should help give our trees and give the soil a boost. And it's, it's a better cover in here, I think, than the grass is. So we're just gonna throw it all over the place and see what happens. After reading that book two years ago, I decided we needed more velvet beans and this variety is not easy to find inside of the United States. Nobody really seems to sell the seeds. And so last year we grew out some to use for cover crops. We actually planted them, took really good care of them and put them along trellises so we could grow up a lot of seed. So I'm taking those seeds that we grew last year and I'm planting them out here. And if you're interested in getting some seed for yourself and giving this a try, particularly if you're in Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Texas, any of those lower warmer states, probably zones six and warmer. Uh, my daughter has some hand-drawn seed packages. There's some velvet beans in her Etsy store if you want to try it out. It's a useful cover crop and I figured well since we can't get the seed we just got to grow our own so we grew a bunch of it and uh, we're using that and we do have some that she has in her store as well. So you can check that out. I will put a link below and I will update you as to how these velvet beans do over the course of this year. They like it when it's hot, they grow right through the summer, and in the fall we should have them all over the place. So we shall see. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to check out the links below. And until next time, may your thumbs always be